This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Opinions expressed are those of the show's hosts, not WPSL or Port St. Lucie broadcasters. Any reproduction or reuse of this program without the written consent of WPSL is strictly prohibited. It's 11.08. Time for Treasure Coast Justice with Ms. Donna DeMarchi. Good morning. It's nice to be back, my friend. Nice to see you again. Yep, nice we, to see you in studio again. Well, we are. Yeah. Uh, our firm had a big week last week. We had a trial here in St. Lucie County. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to be here, but we're glad to be back. So I didn't get to tease the show. So I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to talk ab about gun um, safety and responsible gun ownership. And before I introduce our very special guests, you know, my friend Google and I have an ongoing relationship. And I did look up some statistics, especially Naturally. here in Florida. So I, you know, since January 1st of this year, there have been 43 mass shootings in Florida with 16 deaths. It's just amazing. So mass shootings are category categorized basically as anything with more than one Oh, you know, I was going to say, yeah. wait a minute, where was I? Okay. Um, and right now, the legislature is still looking at um, banning semi-automatic rifles and shotguns here in Florida. And obviously, that's very controversial, and we're not going to get into the politics. Um, what we really want to focus on today is being a responsible gun owner. Um, we certainly support in the Second Amendment. Um, and we want to talk about what we can do as uh, citizens to protect ourselves, protect our families, not just in, in a gun situation. We're going to talk specifically to that. But my, my guests today are here with D-Day. And I'm going to let their president, Cecilia Deo, tell you a little bit more about the company. But they have really built an incredible product around part of its teaching people like me. So I'll tell you my backstory. I was petrified of firearms always have been since a little girl and really no solid basis for it other than fear of the unknown um, so I took a course with um, Don Deo through D-Day on uh, they called it the Annie Oakley course and it was geared towards women like me who were afraid but the reality is there's a gun in my home I need to know what to do if I needed to use it properly and safely um, or should I encounter someone with a weapon what i need to do to best protect myself sure. um, and or my family and it it was incredible it was uh, two days on the weekends the first thing um, don spent a lot of time with us teaching me what this thing was in my hand how to responsibly um, load it unload it care for it all in a classroom setting without live ammunition you know just to learn the basics of of the the gun itself and then we went out to a live course and he was so incredibly patient don i'll never forget i really really appreciated that teaching us um how to properly hold aim fire again load and, and unload the gun and it's probably one of the greatest lessons I've had in my life I'll admit I'm still afraid um, and Cecilia has offered several times to take me back out so that we can still work on that but it, it's so so important it's a reality that something we should know about a lot of us have guns in our homes to protect us as we should but we really really need to know how to use it safely keep our again keep our family safe so i'm going to turn the mic over to cecilia deo who's the president of d-day just to tell you a little bit about them their company and then we're going to kind of let them take the floor a little bit and talk to us and, and we're going to they do a lot more than that but that's going to be our focus at least for the beginning of the show and then we'll talk a little bit more about their company and what they do well thank you so much first of all for having us donna um we are very passionate about this topic and we have um, centered our business around safety and in one aspect um, of what we do is gun ownership and being accurate and safe with your weapon and I like the fact that we're going to steer away from politics today um, because that really has nothing to do with if you are a current gun owner 
how safe are you? And the thing that makes our company different, D-Day Response Group, is that the instructors are all special forces. And so we are at the top tier level of training in the country. Um, you know, and we're lucky enough to have trained civilians, police officers, fire rescue personnel. Um, and so really the professionals come to us as well as the everyday gun owner, um, just like yourself, you know, you're somebody who has guns in their home, but has no idea how to operate them. And so we're really fortunate to have such a vast level of experienced instructor, instructors at our disposal. And um, they do such a fantastic job with educating everyone from the basics all the way up to um, the higher end of users, which are, you know, kind of the competition shooters and things like that. So I'm going to introduce my husband and also the chief of operations for D-Day Response Group, Don Deo. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thanks so much for having us. And he's also one of the lead instructors. So I, I just want to start out with some you know, one thing in particular, Donna, that you brought up, you came out to one of our classes, and that's a very basic class, you know, beginner level. <clears throat> it was two days long, but you also brought up a good point that you don't currently carry your gun, you referenced for home defense. And um, that's a good point because not everybody that comes out to our courses is ready to carry a gun on their person because there's a lot of legal aspects, ramifications, and then additional safety concerns that come in with that. Um, the one thing in our classes that we work uh, very hard to do is, is everybody needs to be comfortable. Um, you can't really learn in an environment that you don't feel safe and you don't feel comfortable. So we start from the basics. We use the old school crawl, walk, run. Um, you can get so much out of training dry fire with the weapon with no live ammunition yet and you still at this point could do that in your own home you know we we tell people um, we haven't even touched on medical kits medical training which we highly recommend and that's a big part of what we do but just repetition with with gun ownership is important whether it's practicing at night going to the safe and getting out your gun or, or however you carry it at home. You know, if you have young children in the house, you know, there's so many different ways to keep them safe and yourself safe, uh, still being able to respond or react to a situation. Um, but you have to practice that. And so many people don't practice the basics and it's perishable. If you don't do it for six months, you will not be very good at it. Okay, and with that same aspect, some people that practice all the time, whether it's law enforcement, military, or civilians, competitive shooters, some people get very confident and complacent about safety, and that's where accidents happen. Yeah, I think complacency is your biggest enemy when it comes to... Because that's when you become sloppy, right? Exactly. If you become overconfident or you're just too busy to practice, either way, either end of the spectrum, that's where accidents happen. Yeah, we, I, I was just, there was recent incidents, I don't want to get into details, but there was a recent incident um, where just the basic, basic safety briefing prior to reinitiating training, it was a break, you know, after lunch, everybody's training all day with firearms, and then you have a break for lunch, um, and uh you know, there was a situation uh, here in Florida where somebody was shot by somebody else. Fortunate they, they lived because there was proper medical care and somebody actually was not afraid to initiate medical care and move forward with that. But it happened because there was a lack of reinitiating a safety brief, kind of gathering everybody's mind back, refocus, right? We just went to lunch and we kind of went off in a different space. Now let's refocus, okay? Because one of the things that happens is not everybody wants to admit that they don't know as, you know, as much as they do. A lot of in our uh, female classes, we have some of the wives come out and girlfriends and they say, well, you know, basically, you know, my husband was born with the, uh, the gun gene, right? He just was born knowing how to shoot and this, that. And, you know, 
that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> oh, I remember after I took your course, I sent my husband to, to your course because I, I knew that even though they think they know, they don't really because they haven't been properly trained. Right. Just because you can pull the trigger doesn't make you a safe shooter. And that is um, something that in Florida especially, it's relatively easy to get your concealed weapons permit. But I always tell people that if you're not willing to spend the money on the training that you are on the weapon itself, you really re need to reconsider whether you should carry um, a, a weapon in your home because, you know, training from the best is an expense and you should be willing to spend it for something like it with a deadly weapon. And I think that that's a real, that's a huge eye opener is just because I can get a permit if I'm not willing to spend the money and the, and the time to train with it properly, you might want to reconsider owning something um, that can, you know, potentially be deadly. Realistically, just for the layman, how much training is needed? If you've never, like if you've never handled a weapon in your life. Well, the introductory courses with us are one to two days. Um, and that is, well, I, I think that you should take those before you get your permit to carry. Um, that makes sense. Sure. Yep. And then if you want to continue carrying um, and be confident with your carrying, I think that you need to practice quarterly and with a, with a professional company and then also on your own. You need to, be, like Don said, dry fire, which is a term that means it, that you're practicing in your home without ammunition in your weapon. And so those things should be done often. Our, just to add to that, our, our basic course, we call it beginner handgun. And, you know, we do get people who call and say, well, I don't want to take beginner handgun. I'm not a beginner. Most people have not had any formal training, you know, unless you're law enforcement or in the military. And even in some of those cases, not all law enforcement and not all military had extensive weapons training. They just don't. I sure so, didn't. I didn't. I did yeah. eight years in the U.S. Navy and had you know, an introductory, maybe few hours into guns. And when I met Don, I was still scared to death. I didn't grow up with them. And so being married to a Green Beret with a gun collection is something that I thought, okay, well, then it's time to get ready to, to be around these, you know, my entire life married to him. We've had several guns and I needed to get comfortable. And that's where my own personal journey began you know we've been married for 12 years now and so I know what it's like to you know in, to be in Donna's shoes where your husband or your significant partner or other um, has weapons and you know they're there and they make you uncomfortable but it's time to you know summon some courage and do the thing that you're scared of because it is so important that everyone in your home know the mechanics of the gun how they uh, work, and and how to use them if, if you're willing to do that. Well, you mentioned uh, being in the Navy mm -hmm. as long as you were. Um, I was in Armed Forces Radio and Television out of the Air Force, but I only touched a weapon maybe in a yeah. half a in dozen basic times. training, right? Yeah. In basic. Yeah. Well, the, the military loves the term familiarization. We're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, it, it's not training sometimes. Yes, it's yes. just, we're gonna Here, let you look at it. Here's what a gun it, looks like. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, going back to our beginner handgun course, it's the minimum that we shoot in that course. Um, it's six hours long, it's 300 rounds of ammunition. So if you bring out your handgun, you're gonna shoot 300 rounds. Um, it's not that we just put that number on it. We don't wanna over, you know, there's, there's a lot of dry firing, which are, prior to going live rounds, like Donna was saying in the class, but that is all time. Those are all repetitions. Those count as repetitions, and we get we build up some muscle memory, you know, with that. And that's, that's the part that a lot of people forget, um, or they switch from weapon to weapon. They own a couple different handguns, and they're like, well, this is the, this is the one I'm most accurate at the range with, but this is not the one I carry or I would go to for home defense initially. You know, so we have to, you know, train with the weapon that you're actually going to use, that you're going to go to wh when it counts. Um, put the repetitions in. If, if you're on a budget, which I don't know anybody who's, who's not, do the dry firing. 
try to set aside you know 50 you know 50 rounds of ammunition and try to get to the range weekly monthly whatever you can and then seek out additional training you yeah, can stick always with be some a of the seeker, same right? yeah some always of the same be a instructors. learner and that goes for anything really it's never never stop teaching yourself how to be better and do some research you know other people have taken courses do some research there's a lot of great firearms instructors out there that's that you know stick to the basics that are very safe and you can pull up some YouTube videos. There's also some who are not so safe. And you, you can very quickly look at their, <laughs> the YouTube video or make some phone calls, you know, do some research and go, that's, that's not who I want to go spend my money on. But this is, this is kind of, you got to be in it for the long haul, especially if not only you're going to have it in your home, but you're going to start carrying on your person. Because like the old saying goes, right, you know, and if there's, a, you know, in a knife fight, somebody's going to get cut. Sure. If the guns get drawn, somebody's possibly going to get shot. Okay, and that's kind of where we step into the whole medical training and medical kits, you know, from that point. Okay, Donna, how much time do you get to practice? So I am not the best student. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. And, and, and I admit that be, because I'm still apprehensive. I need to do more training to work on that. Um, I did not, th with the training they provided me, I was able to or qualified to go ahead and apply for the concealed carry, but I didn't do so because I knew that was not something that I'm prepared to do. Um, so even though I could have, I didn't because, like, you know, they're saying you, that's not something you just do lightly mm -hmm. um, so I'm certainly not ready for that um, I do think I should go back you know when they offer hopefully the any Oakley course will come up again um, what was nice was I also did that with a friend so having that support helped too but again I can't credit their the trainers especially Don because he worked with me quite a bit because for you know I have a personal relationship with them as well that helped but they're all very patient and tolerant of us ladies <laughs> you know because we're not necessarily easy to deal with a few were very comfortable and confident but there were a few of us that were much more apprehensive so taking that extra time you know you can do I, I don't remember what the mandatory minimum is but a very short course and, and be qualified to get your concealed carry but you know as Don and Cecilia are saying it's not enough to really really be prepared um, should the what we hope is not inevitable by any stretch of the means. It's certainly rare, but should you actually need to utilize your skills? Um, so like I said, I'm not the best student. I haven't done the practice that I need to and should. Um, I do know where they are in my home, <laughs> you know, um, but I don't have that confidence. So uh, I, I should go back and get additional training. Yeah, at least you're planning that. So, yeah. I mean, that's good. Yeah. 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 I think everyone, um, you know, I, I would like to think, and, I, and I, I'm confident about this when I say that, is that if you take our classes, the main thing that we want you to walk away with is not that you need to be Rambo the next day. Well, you know, that is not at all what we, our goal is not to, to create a bunch of gun nuts. Our goal is to create a bunch of safe and educated um, owners responsible people exactly exactly it's it's building a you know the course that Donna took it's building a foundation um, if, if you start with a rock-solid foundation you know and you build some muscle memory off of that then as you know whether it's Donna or one or someone else one of our other friends or clients uh, that says hey I'm ready for the next step we start upping some of the stress levels you know during the courses because you know unfortunately God forbid, if you're carrying a gun for self-defense and you get put in one of these situations, your heart rate's not going to be normal. You're not going to be standing flat-footed on the range. Um, so there's things that we do, you know, there's several different things that we do to kind of up the ante a little bit, right, and get the stress levels up. And um, you need to be able to perform not only the functions of the weapon, but make it safe, you know, be thinking about other people that are in, in the area. You know, there's just a lot that comes into this. And most people that go to the range on a regular basis, they can, they can shoot just fine, you know, flat-footed on the range with a paper target. And, but you, you kind of need to challenge yourself, you know, and you need to, you know, put some stress in there, you know, seek out some additional training to, you know, put a little bit of stress on you so that, you know, when your heart rate is up around, you know, 140, 150, you'll be able to perform in... Um, know your limitations you know how far is this person away from me how crowded is this place you know should I even draw my gun 
There are so many different things that go into this, and that's all gun safety. That's being able to think through that on, in a stressful environment. And if you haven't practiced it or had any training in it, you're not going to do very well with it. Yeah, you see a lot of, uh, whether it's police or military, using almost looks like, you know, the, uh, the video uh, opponents, yes. if you will. Yes, it's, I mean, you know, a lot of that stuff, although it's very realistic, you know, nowadays it's gotten really good, uh, uh, the quality and things like that, and they can bring in stress levels with that. Um, I think that's a great component. That's a great accessory. That's, that's a piece of the pie. But I do believe that live fire, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer that live fire training, you know, when those live rounds are everybody's on the range together with live rounds, whether you're police, fire, military, or civilian, um, whether you're top tier military unit or on the SWAT team, you need to do the live fire training because that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. You know, that's. Well, you know, and it's not just Donna. I mean, I've talked to a lot of police officers um, who never have fired a gun on active duty. Yep. That's the norm. I mean, for the most part, that's yeah. the norm. And, and I would say lucky them, right? Because yeah. that's not sure, something you exactly. ever want to do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is amazing, Donna. It's, it's, it's a topic that uh, very, is very important um, because gun ownership is a heavy-duty responsibility. Mm -hmm. It really is. Right, right now, I think it's right at 2 million or just under 2 million uh, concealed carry permits okay. in the state of Florida. Wow. Ooh. Well, we will continue with uh, Treasure Coast Justice with Donna DeMarchi this week from Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd. We're talking gun safety. If you want to get involved, give us a buzz. 340-1590, 340-1590. No politics in this sense. Regular safety. News straight ahead from Florida's News Network. This is Florida News Now. A tropical depression is swirling between the northern Bahamas and the east coast of Florida this morning. Florida Weather Center meteorologist Heather Zare says it's a weak system that will move northward and primarily impact coastal areas. Increased downpours with these, a little bit of an increase in the surf, of course, as well as a slight increase in rip currents. But due to the weak nature of this, it's really not going to pack a great deal of a punch. The depression is forecast to dissipate tomorrow. The number of hepatitis A cases in Florida this year is nearing 2,000. Since the beginning of 2018, there have been at least 28 deaths in the state tied to hepatitis A. Firefighters in Panama City Beach will soon have more responsibility for ensuring beach safety. The fire department will assume control of the city's beach patrol in October. Meanwhile, the city council this week will consider allowing police to arrest swimmers who ignore double red flag warnings. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection is celebrating prescribed fires, which have been applied to a record 96,000 acres in the Sunshine State this year. The Park Service says the fires help maintain a healthy ecosystem. Impressive numbers for Florida's capital city when it comes to education rankings, according to Wallet Hub's list of the most and least educated cities in America. Tallahassee ranks 15th overall thanks to its high rankings in a number of key metrics. Right now, it also ranks 15th in terms of the share of adults with a graduate or professional degree. Uh, the quality of a university is ranked 15th. And when it just comes to the gender education gap, it has the second smallest gap in the country. Underperforming cities on the list include Miami and Ocala. With Florida's News, I'm Larry Spillman. This is FNN, the Florida News Network. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You've seen me around the neighborhood, and you've told me I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we could grow up and be whatever we want. 
I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everyone. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The law firm of Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd is a proud supporter of home teams of the Treasure Coast because this is where our attorneys live and work. I'm Steve Hoskins, a 73 graduate of Fort Pierce Central and senior partner of the firm. I've represented thousands of Treasure Coast accident victims since 1980. If you've been injured in any type of accident, call me for a free case evaluation right here at home. Our home team is ready to work for you, so call me at 464-4600. With offices in Port St. Lucie. Having the home field is considered an advantage in football. I'm injury attorney Donna DeMarchi from Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd, and I'm a graduate of Martin County High School. Our firm is a strong supporter of the home teams of the Treasure Coast. If you've had the misfortune of being injured in any type of accident, please remember that our firm has four local offices. Our hometown injury team is ready to work for you. So call us today, Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd, at 464-4600 for a free case review. With offices in Port St. Lucie. A level playing field is important in any athletic game. If you've been injured in any type of accident, you will quickly find yourself fighting an uphill battle. I'm injury attorney Taylor Hoskins from Hoskins Turco Lloyd & Lloyd, and I'm a 2008 graduate of Lincoln Park Academy. At Hoskins Turco, our injury team has leveled the playing field for thousands of Treasure Coast injury victims since 1980. For a free case review at any of our local Treasure Coast offices, call Hoskins Turco Lloyd & Lloyd today at 464-4600. With offices in Port St. Lucie. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. It's 1134 WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. WPSL.com worldwide, webcaster to the world on Alexa and Google Home. I want to thank all of you folks listening in the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and all the other places who uh, listen to IRSC basketball. And by the way, Pat called, uh, a little busy right now, can't go on the phone, but wants to thank you guys for doing this show. Says it is a very good and important topic. Cool. No, Thanks, and thank Pat. you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pat. And I can't agree more. You know, what's, what's interesting is during the break, we have the news on here in studio, and they were talking about a shooting in Indian River County yep. and also talking about speeding up the concealed carry process, which makes me nervous, honestly, Don, because that doesn't seem to make sense because, again, you really need that proper training um, in order to be able to carry responsibly and safely. Um, I want to segue a little bit, Don. You, you touched on a little bit earlier um, how important it is, if you're going to carry, to have at least some basic medical training. So tell them a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, our our background, um, you know, most of uh, the instructors' backgrounds with D-Day Response Group are, um, you know, Green Beret medics, so spent a lot of time in the Army in combat, um, have actually used all these, you know, new latest and greatest commercial grade tourniquets to stop the bleeding on arms and legs, you know, uh, the hemostatic gauze, the gauze that, you know, when it comes in contact, you maintain direct pressure, it will stop the bleeding, you know, start, you know, um, coagulating and and we can put pressure dressings on there. And it just, I mean, it kind of goes. Now, is that new? It Well, I mean, it's it's relatively new on on the civilian side. And um, I can tell you um, in the military, um, you know, I got issued my first CAT, you know, combat application tourniquet uh, back in March of 2004. Um, and we use them extensively overseas. They have saved, un, you know, unbelievable amounts of lives. And uh, it took probably until about, don't quote me, five or six years ago for uh, departments like Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Now, every fire, every fire engine Every rescue truck has a minimum of probably three to five cat tourniquets on them, okay? And they're used on traffic accidents, shootings, you know, maritime, you know, issues, prop injuries. So 
um, kind of getting back to what, you know, I don't want to get too far off topic and go down that rabbit hole too much. But everybody, I think, right now has probably heard about, like, this big campaign, Stop the Bleed. Um, if you haven't, you're probably not listening to the radio, watching TV, or, I mean, there's, there's just so much going on right now with Stop the Bleed. A lot of this, you know, started, you know, coming about after a lot of the mass shootings. Um, hey, let's get more people involved. It's the same concept that the military used many years ago. We got away from just yelling out to a medic and a medic running over and applying a tourniquet. Sure. We switched to self-aid, buddy aid, first aid. So self-aid was, hey, let's give everybody a tourniquet and teach them how to use it. That way, if they're still conscious and they're injured, they can apply it to themselves. And then their buddy gets there once it's safe. They can apply a tourniquet or do further care and then moves on to first aid, you know. Um, so that same aspect is being used right now. Like it started out, hey, let's get more teachers trained. Okay, then let's get students trained, you know, and God forbid we have a school shooting. Those are the people that are standing right there next to the injured people and can stop the bleeding. Okay, right, you know, immediately. And there's a lot more that goes into that, obviously, maintaining their own safety and things like that. But one of the things we believe in is um, we train fire rescue, we train uh, law enforcement, uh, we nationally certify them all in, uh, you know, tactical medicine right now is, is pretty much the latest and greatest uh, you know, accredited training out there for, you know, civilian public safety. Um, and then we have a little bit lesser courses, you know, we have our own course emergency lifesaver, um, which is basically an extended stop the bleed course. We go a little bit more in depth and we like doing a lot of scenarios. Um, we like, uh, training just as many times as possible on applying these tourniquets and then running it into a scenario and it reinforces the skills learned and the new equipment that they've been exposed to. So um, most all of our shooting classes or our tactical medicine classes, uh, we train everybody on tourniquets, on pressure dressings, all the latest and greatest bleeding control. And we believe if you're carrying a gun on you or you, know, you own a gun and have a gun in your home, you should, you should spend the money, you know, whether it's you know, $60 to $200, depending on what size kit you want and how many components, and get yourself some training. Because it might not just be you or your own family that you're, you know, going to be put in a position to save their life, but it could be, you know, a bystander that you're on the same scene with. Um, and we've seen like at concerts and stuff any, like that. Oh, you sure. name it. All yeah. these events? Absolutely. Could be a traffic accident. I mean, just not sure. too long ago, if you saw the story, bystanders applied tourniquets to the uh, Miami-Dade motorcycle um, the Miami-Dade officer that wrecked on his uh, motorcycle and applied tourniquets. And yes, he lost both his legs, but he's still alive. And he's only alive because those tourniquets were applied. I was just watching the uh, interview and the story the other day. So those that bystanders can do a lot, especially when it comes to bleeding control. Wow, that, that's, that's something. Uh, uh, Donna, as far as like, do you have medical kits that, you know? So because I took the D-Day course, I actually have at least the stop bleed kit and I keep it in my car because I'm quite likely to be somewhere, um, come across an accident or something like that. And where you I do a lot it. of driving. Yeah, I do yeah. a lot of driving. So I, I do have that and I'm also going to invest, I, I've talked to Cecilia about this recently, in one of their home kits that has quite a bit more to it, not just for bleeding, but they they have a product, multiple products, you know, not for home, for your boat. Um, they, they train marine captains and boat captains and their crews on safety. It's a whole separate side of what they do. Um, we did our boat safety talk a few weeks ago, but that was more on, you know, how to be safe when you're on, but what if the unfortunate thing happens and you're miles offshore, you know, um, or even we were talking off air a little bit, we have hurricanes of brewing. Look, luckily we, we escaped this season. one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, this little depression staying offshore, but, but anytime you're in a situation where the 911, the EMTs can't get to you immediately, there's so much that we can do ourselves. That doesn't require medical degree. You know, just getting some of that basic training, basic medical training, um, we can really help 
thwart off worst case scenarios sometimes you know just with that basic so i i've actually done their stop bleed course twice um they offer it a lot uh, to the public the, i love d-day because they're so into community and trying to make sure they train as many people as they can as affordably as they can so they've done some training with uh, project lift down in stewart who works with as risk teenage boys i was fortunate to do the training there when they did it there and also through the course that i took um, it was a very important component of the gun safety course that i took i think one of the most um, tragic things that i see is that when people get hurt and i saw this a lot in the videos when the hurricane flooded houston um, were all these medical emergencies and because the emergency services were so overtaxed there would be whole groups of people who didn't know um, what to do for th things like CPR and, and, and um, just the basics. And, and, and I think that that is something that really motivates this company is that, you know, we don't want to keep this knowledge in the hands of professional practitioners. They are, they're, they're required to maintain their training, but wh where we can really make a huge difference is giving everyone a basic level of understanding when it comes to life safety you know i mean there's way more heart attacks in the united states than there are fires but yet every building is required to have a fire extinguisher well what if every employee was required to learn cpr aed and bleeding control we could make a significant difference in our communities by stepping up and doing something but people have to be empowered with the knowledge and that's really what um, is the driving force behind this company when we started we wanted to take our knowledge and experience you know the instructor pool has you know combat deployments all over the world and um, and one of the great things about green berets is one of their missions is to train other people so on top of being combat proven They've also been instructing, you know, people all over the world through the use of translators and, and whatnot. So if they can teach, you know, the Afghani or Iraqi or South America or wherever they're deployed basic medicine, then they should be able to teach our, you know, their fellow citizens basic medicine. And, and they're very, very good at it. And I couldn't be prouder of the instructor team. But if you're wondering, um, we, we do a segment on our, on our Instagram called um, Freedom Friday and it's because we want people to have the freedom of what if I could have done something it's freedom from the what if I could have done something because that would be the worst feeling is if you had an, a tragedy and you you know close to you and you racking your brain what if I had just taken a Saturday out of my busy schedule and learned how to stop the bleed what if I had taken a CPR course and felt confident to uh, help you know Uncle Uncle Jimmy with you know the heart attack that he had last week or whatever it was so yeah it's one of the things that we stress in all our classes is um, uh, we might be teaching a sport fish uh, boat captain and crew owner and family but we stress to them yes there are a few components that are directly related to the maritime industry but the stop but the bleeding control part the CPR, you know, the, the actual chest compressions sure, and defibrillator. Sure. This is 24-7. This takes a, this is 24-7. It might be, God forbid, it's your own family member. And, um, you know, we've been so fortunate. This started with, you know, the maritime industry and public safety and training, certifying, um, you know, police departments, fire departments. We're, we're so humbled. I mean, honestly, we're so, you know, it's just such a privilege to be able to be the ones, you know, directly responsible for better preparing them to not only save themselves, God forbid they get in a situation, but this rolls over onto saving their community, saving the public. You know, it just, we train Palm Beach Gardens Fire Rescue. Well, now all the citizens of Palm Beach Gardens are a lot, and then, you know, are a lot safer. And then everywhere that firefighter or law enforcement officer goes, Everybody around him is a little bit safer. Sure. So sure. it's it's just it has this ripple effect. Um, just recently, we were out in Montana and have the privilege to train a very remote ranch uh, out in Montana. All this stuff translate. Yes, out there we focus a little more on hypothermia and environmental stuff, but it still I'll stopped bet. the bleed. They're they're using you know they're bow hunting you know rifles, horses, bears. I mean. Um, 
next month we're going to train 10 car dealerships up in uh, Massachusetts. So some of these corporations are taking advantage of what we offer in getting all their employees trained and making sure that they have the defibrillators, the bleeding control kits. It's, it's just overall making not only their business and their employees safer, but their employees' families and that whole community. Anybody that comes in that dealership or comes to that ranch to go hunting is in better hands now. So it's, it's just a very important aspect of it's not just firearms that cause, you know, holes and bleeding and things like that. I mean, it, you know, sometimes when we watch the news a little bit, we, we see that as the majority of it, but there's a lot of other stuff that's going on out there that this training, uh, this emergency medical training will help in these uh, kits. So, And the, our full day course is um, called, we named it Emergency Lifesaver. And it's on the basis that, you know, we, we said earlier when we were talking about weapons that complacency is your enemy. It's, it's based on the fact that if I can do something, then I should. And, but if I know nothing, who's going to help me go from helpless to helpful? And, and the one-day course, Emergency Lifesaver, covers CPR, AED, bleeding control, splinting if you have a broken bone. Patient covers. movement. We do scenarios. Um, you know, we talk a lot about uh, the dangers of, you know, the security piece. And security, sometimes people think that there's a shooting and I can't get involved because people are still shooting. Well, what about a traffic accident? on I-95 and there's a motorcyclist laying in the road, that's pretty dangerous, you, right? So we, we try to teach people to not run out blindly. You know, you gotta focus and make sure you protect yourself. If you get injured and you're laying there next to the other patient, you can't do anybody any good. So we try to, you know, it's more than just teaching the skill set. We're kind of teaching how to handle these stressful scenarios as well. And that's why we run scenarios in all of our classes. If you don't run a scenario, if I just, if I came in here with a tourniquet and I said put it on a couple times and I demonstrated it to you and you did it a couple times, you may be okay with it for a little while, um, but it's going to start, you know, that, that training, you're going to start kind of forgetting, you go, what did he say exactly about that? But if I have you do it multiple times in a scenario and you're placing it on a mannequin or another human being it, with, with a little bit of scenario, you know, basis to it, um, we find that everybody that goes through the training um, absorbs more of it. It reinforces the skill that they learned and they get a lot more familiar with the equipment. And they understand, you know, the principles behind it, not just how this tourniquet works, but how is this tourniquet actually stopping the bleeding from this arm or this leg? What is exactly happening when the tourniquet tightens down, tightens down on the arm or leg? So, And there's just still a lot of people that think that tourniquets are bad, that if you put a tourniquet on, you're definitely going to lose uh, your arm or leg. There, there's a lot of myths that can be dispelled through good training. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do folks find you? I mean, that's the next obvious question because this is incredible information. Thank you so much. Well, you can definitely find us on our website, which is www.d-dey.com. Or you can find us on social media um, on Facebook if you just put in D Day Response Group, and that's D dash D E Y Response Group. You'll we'll come right up. Or also we're on Facebook. I mean, I'm sorry, on Instagram as well. So um, there's a lot of ways you can get a hold of us, um, and I think that we try to make ourselves pretty accessible to everybody. And as we mentioned, we travel all over the country doing these trainings. We also do them in a private setting and. Um, hopefully soon we'll be we're gonna have our new uh, brick well, and mortar right up our new brick and mortar in Stewart and so you can come and drop by and check out the schedules and get on the classes that'll be in 2020 so we're looking forward to that as well absolutely that's cool now where's that gonna be in Stewart off you of Jack locate? James off of Jack James. okay yeah 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 right off of I-95 that'll be perfect we'll have our own classroom our own showroom um, you know, one thing right now is a lot of this equipment that people want to purchase, whether it's for their boats, their stop the bleed kit, a lot of times you have to order it online. And there is a lot of, um, uh, you know, equipment that's out there, copies, you know, that are out there and they're not proven. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they look just uh, just like the real ones. Um, so if you start ordering them online, you yeah, don't know don't what you're Don't go on getting. Amazon and order something that could be made in China. You know, you really need to do your research and get something that's legitimate. We're looking forward to um, being able to have our clients come into our showroom and, you know, try this stuff out, look at exactly what, give them some more options. They can come in and actually check out the kits, whether it's our largest kit for a, you know, big uh, offshore fishing boat or the smallest kit that'll slide right under the seat in your car or go in your backpack. Um, and then we'll also have a classroom there and we'll be offering our training courses uh, right there off, you know, at our new location off of Jack James. So we're excited. It's interesting. Um, you talk about defibrillators. A um, friend of mine is an athletic trainer uh, with a professional team, and they've had to use that twice in training camps. So you figure their players are elite athletes. Right. But, you know, it's, it's like those are really, really coming in handy. We hear, we hear it constantly um, for the big boats sometimes. They're like, well, I don't really have any, any older people on my boat. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different things that can cause uh, cardiac arrest. You know, I mean, heck, severe dehydration can cause certain arrhythmias with the heart. And, you That's know, what it is I, with a lot of the athletes. Exactly right. So, um, you know, I, I, it's, an, it's, a, it's like we pay our, our insurance, right, on our car, on our home. Speaking of insurance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's just one of those things that are, it's super important. It's an investment. And I can guarantee you, Cecilia touched on it a little bit earlier. I always say when I'm teaching in our classes, is, you know, you don't want to be, you know, going uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda after the fact, especially if this is someone that's very close to you. Um, it, it would be terrible if you couldn't help even just a bystander, a fellow citizen that you didn't know. But you'll live with that for the rest of your life if it's somebody that you, you should have been able to respond. You should have been able to make, you know, a little bit better decision, a little bit more informed decision, or had the proper equipment to do something and possibly change the outcome. Our whole goal in all of this is to increase survivability, make people more comfortable to respond to these things, do something. There is plenty. Every Publix right now ha has a defibrillator in it. Yep. But you wouldn't believe the amount of people that will video the person on the floor but not walk mm -hmm. over and take the defibrillator out and hook it up. The dang thing will tell you how to do it. If you turn it on, it'll tell you how to do it, you know, so. It's about confidence. Yeah. It's about being empowered. And, and um, you know, I just, I think that people think that there's always someone that's going to save them. You know, we have amazing uh, emergency services in this country, but you know, sometimes their response times are delayed because they're doing, you know, other things or they maybe they're on a big call or maybe you're you're in a remote area. Yeah. And even if they went 100 miles an hour to get to you, it would take several hours. So it is about being empowered to do something. You can be, you know, the own hero, your own hero in your life if there's an emergency. And that's really what this all boils down to. Yeah, and, and very, very briefly, I know we could talk um, for another segment on kids, but obviously you have children in your home. And at what age would you say that we should start training our children, not only just gun safety, but also some of these first aid tips? Well, I mean, we, our children, when they were, um, well, it's been a few years ago now. Well, they're eight and 10 now. Yeah, they were, they, they've been able to apply tourniquets um, and, you know, people would say, well, hey, that, that tourniquet, it, it won't work on their arm or leg. And, I, and, well, okay, let me grab the tourniquet and wrap it around their leg and let me put it on their leg. Okay, it's going to hurt a little bit, but, you know, it's, you know, it's going to build a little character, you know, right there. So <laughs> They've but, been able to do it for a few years now, <coughs> I think. Absolutely. I think, it, I think when they're ready to, uh, you know, and I guess every child is different, when they can understand that, hey, if something is bleeding really badly, I could at least put some weight on it, you know? Put some pressure on it, and, that, yeah. and that's at the very basic levels. I mean, I yeah. think a four-year-old could probably understand that, a four- or five-year-old. And then as they get a little bit older, you know, and their, and their motor skills get better, they can start learning about tourniquets and how to wrap dressings. And, and our kids love it. Our kids find it to be, I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of fun to it right now because nothing bad has ever happened, thankfully. But, um, you know, they know how to tie their tourniquets and they know how to stop bleeding. 
And um, we taught them that after several of the active shooter situations that were going on in their schools. And we felt like, hey, I mean, your own teacher might not know how to do this, but they you They carry will. a small kit in the bottom of their backpack, they carry, something very simple. Yeah. So they're very empowered. Wow. Okay. And the firearms thing, just to not go away from that, that has a lot to do with maturity. Mm-hmm. You know, some, some kids could be 9 or 12 and go out on the range. We've, we've had, you know, people come out and take our beginner handgun at, you know, 13, 14, or 15 and done great, you know. But it just really depends on the maturity level. Sure. Well, Cecilia Don, I can't thank you enough for coming out. I think you've given our listeners a lot of great information. This segment was certainly not about Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd, and Lloyd, but I'd be remiss if I didn't remind our listeners that we are here for you. Um, Should you be involved in any type of accident or incident where you're injured due to someone else's negligence, we have offices in Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie, Okeechobee, and Vero Beach, and we can be reached at 772-464-4600. But I highly recommend, especially for a business owner, train your employees, contact D-Day. They're they're one of many resources, but they're absolutely excellent, well-trained, well-qualified, and can make sure that you, your families, your customers, uh, your, your employees, everyone is a little bit safer. Boy, great information today. It really was. And guilty as charged. I, I, I wish I knew some of those uh, life-saving tips that you guys uh, just talked about. I may have to sign up for one. Today's course. the day. There you, today's the day. That's it. All right, Donna, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Craig, and we'll see everyone next week. See you next week. Thank you all so much. D-Day Response Group. Wow. Very, very informative here on Treasure Coast Justice. Donna DeMarchi from Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd on WPSL, Port St. Lucie. WPSL.com, webcaster of the world on Alexa and Google Home.